podcast may not be for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. The boy was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered by a satanic cult led by a drug dealer. The details of his killing... Some will argue that there are no differences between religion and a cult. But there are. Religion is a map to guide your way to heaven or whatever you believe in. While a cult may use religion within their regime, ultimately you are following one person's beliefs, a cult leader. In this episode, we learn about a charismatic man who twisted an Afro-Cuban religion to suit his needs and ultimately led to the disappearance and murder of American student, Mark Kilroy. Adolfo Jesus Constanzo was born on November 1, 1962, to Cuban immigrant Delia Aurora Gonzalez in Miami, Florida. At only 15, Delia found herself widowed and pregnant with her first child. After her husband passed, she moved to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and eventually remarried and gave birth to a total of three children. Delia baptized her eldest child, Adolfo, as a Roman Catholic, though she was heavily involved in the religion Balo, and Adolfo was heavily influenced. Balo is also known as the Congo Rules, or Las Relgas de Congo. Balo roots lay in the Congo Basin in Central Africa. Congo slaves were brought to Cuba in large groups and many believe this is how the formal religion was created. The language is composed of Spanish and Bantu, or as some say, Legua. The original name Las Reglas de Congo was later changed in Cuba as the heavy use of wooden sticks to prepare altars led to the Spanish word balo, meaning stick. The balo religion believes in natural earth powers and veneration of the spirits, much like the Catholic religion's veneration to the saints. Objects are thought to have powers mostly sticks, and it is believed they have the power of spirits. Balo has been nicknamed the evil twin of Santeria, though there are differences. Santeria believes in one god and multiple lesser gods, much like the Greek gods. At the same time, Balo is mostly the belief of all spirits. Adolfo and his siblings moved to Miami, Florida in 1972. But soon after arriving, his mother's husband suddenly died. Struggling to survive with three children, Delia got married again. This husband was heavily involved in drugs and the occult. Once the family was immersed in the occult beliefs, Adolfo's mother began to believe that he was psychic as a teenager. Adolfo graduated high school but did not complete college. He and his mother were arrested numerous times during this period, mostly minor charges such as petty theft and shoplifting. Adolfo refined his petty theft skills once he met a Haitian Balo priest. The Balo priest taught the young man to con people or sell drugs to make considerable profits. 
Later, as an adult, Adolfo Constanzo moved to Mexico, mostly surviving on tarot card readings he performed. He met a few men, and these men would become his followers. The four men, Adolfo Constanzo, Martin Quintana, Jorge Montez, and Omar Oriea, created a business together. Most of their clients were rich cartel members who would ask for good luck spells. Of course, Constanzo obliged and performed rituals for his rich clients, sacrificing small animals, goats, snakes, chickens, and it was reported that he had even sacrificed a zebra and a few lion cubs. By 1984, he had moved to Mexico City, and the rituals became quite popular and began attracting the most wealthy men in the Mexican society. This led Costanzo to begin stealing human bones from graves. He placed human bones in his cauldron during his rituals to give the rituals strength. He believed his cauldron would become even stronger and provide more protection for his small cult if he had live human sacrifices. This is when he began murdering and mutilating humans. As the years passed, the cult grew in size with a variety of followers and was deemed a full-fledged cult. Cartel members, politicians, musicians, police officers, all followed Costanza and his beliefs and rituals. The cult was then rooted in Matamoros, which lies on the U.S. and Mexican border. Human sacrifices typically were from a rival drug dealer or a cartel. At one point, Costanzo saw the profit in performing rituals with the cartels. He would have protection and possibly some profits from their success. Approaching the most powerful family, the Calzadas, he demanded to be made a business partner. The family rejected him, and after this rejection, seven members of this family went missing. Authorities found signs of some type of ritual at Calzada's office. Later, the bodies of the missing were found, but were missing fingers, toes, ears, and brains, and one was missing its spine. The rejection didn't stop Constanzo. He found a new cartel to befriend. He was introduced to Elio and Ovidio Hernandez. They were brothers. Within the same period, he met a woman named Sarah Aldretti, who became the high priestess of his cult. Aldrete would become next in command if Costanzo was away, and this was often the case as Costanzo would ship marijuana over the border. With the support of the Hernandez brothers and 22-year-old Sarah, he moved the cult to a new location in the desert. Rancho Santa Elena was just 20 miles from Matamoros. With this new location, the rituals took on more twists and violence. And there was more room to store marijuana and cocaine shipments. In August of 1988, Ovidio Hernandez, along with his two-year-old son, disappeared. 
it was apparent that they were kidnapped by another cartel. The Hernandez family sought Costanzo's help, and he obliged with a full human sacrifice, which he felt resulted in the safe return of Hernandez and his son. By the end of 1988, Ovidio Hernandez became an official part of the cult. With a ceremony of ritual bloodletting and prayers to the cauldron, Ovidio joined the others when Costanzo wanted fresh victims as they would hunt their prey. By spring of 1989, Costanzo believed his spells needed the smart and fresh brain of an American student. So his hunters searched for a young man who would suit their leader's needs. The hunters found a young man visiting Mexico on his spring break. Outside of a Mexican bar in Montemoros, the hunters abducted U.S. citizen Mark Kilroy. Mark Kilroy was 21, a pre-med student at the University of Texas at Austin. Mark was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1968, but moved sometime after birth to Santa Fe, Texas. This is where he grew up alongside his brother, Keith Kilroy, and his parents, James and Helen Kilroy. Mark excelled through his childhood and teenage years. He was very athletic and strong academically. Mark Kilroy's disappearance on March 14, 1989, was shocking to all around him. Bradley Moore, Bill Huddleston, Brent Martin had accompanied Mark across the border for some spring break bar hopping. When they decided to head back to their car, they lost track of Mark, but realized he had been chatting with a woman from a Miss Tan Line competition. Moore and Martin headed to the car while Huddleston had to urinate. Mark bid his female friend farewell and waited for Huddleston. But once Huddleston was finished, he didn't see Mark. Assuming he went along with the others, he hurried to catch up to them. All assumed that Mark had gone ahead of them and was waiting at the car but this wasn't the case at all. While Kilroy had been standing on the street waiting for Huddleston, he was called to a nearby vehicle. Once near the vehicle, he was asked if he needed a ride and then forced into it by two men, Serafin Hernandez Garcia and Malio Fabio Ponce Torres. Being physically fit, Kilroy was able to overpower his abductors and escape. But a second car driven by more cult members intercepted him and handcuffed him. Mark was left in the second car overnight and was fed in the morning by the ranch caretaker. Constanzo and cult members duct taped his face and mouth leaving his hands handcuffed behind his back. They placed him in a storage cabin. During this short time at the ranch, the abductors tortured him, sodomized him. Then he became a human sacrifice in their ritual. The cult murdered Kilroy with a machete and removed his brain so it could be boiled in the cauldron. Before burying him, they placed a wire through his spinal column so his bones could be removed easily once he had decomposed. Amputating his legs assisted in burying him. Mark Kilroy's remains were buried amongst all the others who had been sacrificed before him. After Mark's murder, Cult leader Adolfo assured his followers that this sacrifice shielded their drug smuggling from authorities. 
at a routine traffic checkpoint on April 1, 1989, authorities noticed a car run directly through the checkpoint never stopping and crossing the border directly from Texas into Mexico. The police chose not to chase the vehicle with flashing lights and instead sent an unmarked vehicle to follow it. The man driving this vehicle was one of Mark Kilroy's abductors, Serafin Hernandez Garcia. He led authorities directly to the location of the ranch. Authorities stayed a distance behind so as not to be detected. Serafin left the ranch 30 minutes after authorities had followed him. They decided to search the ranch at this time and found traces of marijuana, cult items, and paraphernalia, as well as other evidence pointing to possible criminal activity. Authorities waited to make any arrests and began collecting evidence, relying on informants and monitoring the Santa Elena Ranch. On April 9th, they had made multiple arrests at the ranch, including Elio Hernandez, his nephew Serafin, as well as the caretaker. The caretaker identified Mark Kilroy in a photo shown to him by authorities and Serafin confessed to kidnapping and assisting in Kilroy's murder. Serafin also identified Constanzo and Eldrete as the leaders of the cult and described the rituals and the murders that occurred at the ranch. Serafin led authorities to Mark Kilroy's body and it was exhumed. Mexican authorities were now on a manhunt for cult members, continuously arresting more and more of the members, finally catching up with Constanzo, who was hiding out with four of his followers. A shootout ensued in a small Mexico City apartment. Constanzo, not wanting to be arrested, ordered a follower to shoot him and Quintana Rodriguez so they would be dead when authorities made their way into the apartment. The second in command of the cult, Sarah Aldrete, was arrested after the shootout. She ran out of the small apartment screaming that Constanzo was dead. Aldrete denied any involvement in any of the murders that occurred on the ranch and attempted to convince authorities She was not an actual member of the cult, but just simply going through her initiation. She denied ever being in a relationship with the cult leader and claimed in the Mexico City apartment she had been held hostage. On May 3rd, 1994, Sarah Aldrete was sentenced to 62 years in prison. Other cult members' sentencing varied from 30 to 60 years. Throughout the years, various members of the cult, including Aldrete, speak out to the media, claiming their innocence. Mark Kilroy's parents went on to create the Mark Kilroy Foundation. The foundation promotes drug awareness, education, and prevention. The foundation has worked heavily with the local government and school systems in the area. Their goal with the foundation is to keep kids distracted when they aren't in school. The inner workings of this Mexican cult are beyond terrifying. During the time of these crimes, the media named Constanzo's Mexican gang the Narco Satanists. Crazy stuff. Be careful out there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me while I unraveled this twisted tale. I hope you'll join me again while I explore the unexplained realms.